All right, so we are recording. So I'll just um, keep an eye on the chat. So again, if there's anything specific DocuSign related that you would like to know about or you have specific questions around just to make sure that we're delivering everything that you guys need. Um, who in here has never used DocuSign before? Is there anybody? that hasn't. Okay. So a handful of you guys. Okay, perfect. Great. So what we're going to go through today, um, we're going to talk about really quickly how to create the opportunity that then goes into DocuSign. So we'll spend the, the largest portion of our time together today, um, really talking about DocuSign and how to best use DocuSign. Um, this is essentially like DocuSign 101. So we will be talking about how to pull DocuSign documents in, how to enter the details, how to make sure everything that you need to enter into the documents is there. And then we'll be talking about how to send them for signatures, what they look like when we get them back from signatures, and then some best practices for getting those documents into compliance. So for anybody that um, just recently jumped on, if you guys have anything specific DocuSign wise that you would like to make sure that we cover, feel free to drop those questions or any features that you wanna know more about, just add that to chat so that we can make sure that we are covering that. Um, so any questions from anyone just before we dive in? No, we're good? Okay, thank you guys for being here. My name's Sydney Seymour, if I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you yet. I'm the regional technology trainer for the Carolinas region, so serving North Carolina and South Carolina. Um, I've been with KW since 2010. I'm a labs advisor and a KWU approved instructor and really excited to be your regional technology trainer and get to spend a little bit of time with all of you here today. So I am gonna go ahead and just share my screen. We'll be starting with command, like I mentioned, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and just quickly moving through how to create the opportunity um, in command that then is going to power everything through DocuSign. So is everybody able to see if you can just give me a thumbs up if you're able to see my command screen? Great. Thank you for just letting me know that. Um, so there's a couple different ways that we can go through when we can create opportunities. So we can create the opportunities under the opportunity applet, which is about halfway down. It looks like the two little hands that are shaking. Um, what we can also do is we can also create opportunities under the contacts applet, which is something that I like to do because um, I just think it sometimes makes more sense and then we can really see what we have going on there. So I'm actually just going to go into my contacts and we will, like I said, breeze through making an opportunity. That's the first step is that we would create the opportunity, but we're going to spend the vast majority of our day together over the next hour or so, um, really diving into DocuSign. So I've got the chat open on another monitor over here. So if you guys do have questions and you prefer to drop them in chat, please feel free to do that. Please also feel free to unmute yourself at any time if you have questions or we need clarity on anything or just to pause on anything, feel free to do that. All right, so I'm in my contacts. So while those are loading, I'm just gonna actually take a moment and I'm gonna come up to the top of the page and I'm gonna search for myself. I have myself in here um, just as a good old test contact so we can do everything with this one contact. So like I said, I prefer to actually create the opportunity just underneath the contact. It's just kind of what I'm used to. So I'm gonna go into this contact. And then remember, we have to have someone in as a contact first before we can even create an opportunity. So opportunities are based off of contacts for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm gonna come into this contact and over here on the right, I've got a little opportunities tab right next to that contact section. So I'm gonna click right on opportunities and then this shows me any of the existing opportunities that I have with this contact, which I like a lot because this allows us to see like, oh, this is someone that we've had potentially four transactions with. So I like that I can really see that at a glance underneath my contacts. So if I needed to create a new opportunity um, and we'll do a listing opportunity today, it doesn't really matter. The forms are the only thing that's different but we can do a listing opportunity or a buyer opportunity. We'll just do a listing one. So if I wanted to create a new opportunity under this contact record, all I would do is click on create opportunity. And then you'll see this box where I'm able to enter all of the details. So your market center is going to be the market center right here that you're based out of. And then we need to make sure that we're just paying attention to the opportunity type. Is it a listing opportunity? Is it a buyer opportunity? Is it a landlord or a tenant? Um, we're gonna stick with listing and say that this is a listing opportunity. 
Now, because I'm making the opportunity under the contact, the client is already associated with this opportunity because I'm doing it under the contact record. If I also had a co-seller, so if I had two people that were selling the property, I'd have the availability to just search for a contact right there and add that in as well. The opportunity name we're always going to recommend is the address if you know it. So we're saying that this is a listing. So at this time, we're going to know the address because it's the property that we're listing. Um, so we will go with one, two, three, four, Test Avenue, a really great listing address. Um, I do like that we have the ability to add some custom tags. So these are custom tags specific to this opportunity. I'm going to add some just so we can see what this looks like. So maybe this is a luxury listing that I'm taking and I want to know that. Um, if it was a buyer, I could even create a tag maybe for the lender that they're working with or just anything that I want to know. Kind of a tag about this opportunity is really nice. Now we've got the estimated closing date. Now this is a listing. So I might not know that yet when I'm first taking the listing, but I probably have some sort of understanding of the market and how quickly it's moving. So I might even just push this out maybe like 30, 45 days. We can come in at any time and change this if we need to. We just have to put in some sort of estimated closing date from the very beginning for this to understand the numbers. And then we're going to put in the estimated listing price. We're going on the listing appointment, so maybe we don't know the exact price yet, but we have some sort of idea as far as what they're thinking. And then we'll say that the commission for this is 2.75. So we have to have a commission rate in there. So on the buyer side, if we were representing a buyer, we maybe didn't know the commission yet, we would just put in a gauge and then we can change that at any time. And then underneath that, we've got the opportunity phase. Are we cultivating the seller? Excuse me, is it an appointment or is it an active seller? Um, we're gonna say that it's an appointment and that we are scheduling the appointment and we are preparing the listing documents to take to the actual listing presentation. And then once we've entered all of that, that information, all we're going to do is choose create at the bottom of the page. Um, so Nikki asked, I sold a Ryan home and their commission is a flat fee, 4,000. Yeah. So for this, you can just put a percentage in and then we can come back later and change that when you're actually doing the commission and you're submitting it you'll be able to enter that there's a flat fee right there for that. And then you'll get paid based off of that for the MCA. So great question on that, Nikki. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we have created the opportunity right here. So now we're going to, we know this is the one that we wanna go into, one, two, three, four, test avenue. So if we need to then go into that opportunity, we would just click directly on that. So I do wanna pause there for just a moment and just, um, really walk through opportunities and the best practice of using opportunities. So sometimes I hear from agents, like, I just feel like with DocuSign and stuff, it's just a lot of things, right? It's a lot of buttons. It's a lot of things I have to do. So remember that everything that we've done so far in the seven minutes that we've been together, ideally would have been done prior to even going in and cre creating these documents in DocuSign. And here's what I mean by that. We want to make sure in opportunities that you're really using the cultivate and the appointment statuses. Um, the reason for that is because that's where it really starts to understand your metrics and understand your numbers. So if we're getting into the habit of just going in and creating an opportunity the second that we need paperwork, you're really missing out on a lot of opportunities for the system to understand your business. Because the way the system works is if I have a conversation with someone today and they say, you know, we are not interested in selling, but we're always interested to know what we could get. We would always sell for a fit, you know, for this price, right? And if we see, well, maybe the market is telling us we're around that price. And so we might do a CMA, we might start to have a conversation with them. We're cultivating that seller. Then we move them to the appointment phase. Then we move them to an active seller once we actually have paperwork signed. So don't miss those two stages. So don't just say, okay, I'm going to the listing presentation today. I need to pull the paperwork in. Create them as an opportunity when you're really starting to cultivate them because number one, it saves you time. You've already got that opportunity created. You're then just going in when we're going in right now. But number two, it starts to really track and understand your business better for that. So I'm just gonna pause there real quick and just see, do we have any questions on anything that we've covered so far? Um, just creating the opportunity from the very beginning. So the appointment is when you go for this listing, let's say is when you go to present um, 
your paperwork for them to sign up to list their house is not the actual initial meeting or is that all one and the same? So it can be whatever you would like to. So in opportunities, you have five different phases and then we have stages underneath that. So you have the cultivate appointment, active under contract and close. And in appointment, we have appointments that we've are scheduling appointments that we've scheduled and appointments that we've kept. So you can kind of move them down the progression for that and, and use those phases as you like. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks for the question. That's a great one. Anybody else, any other questions just before we move on? All right, we're gonna move on. We're gonna talk about DocuSign. So we've created the opportunity. We're ready to dive into DocuSign. We're gonna go through some best practices that I think will really save you some time with DocuSign because we wanna save you time, especially in the market that we're in right now. So I am in kind of like what I think of as the back almost section of this opportunity. So I just click directly into the opportunity and I've got these tabs up here at the top. So I've got the details, the seller profile, and then we're gonna go into documents. That's really the only thing that we're gonna focus on today is documents. So we're gonna click directly on the documents tab. And then every market center is different. So I know I have many different agents from many different market centers on this call. And so your market center has created a checklist for you. So over here on the left, you're gonna see that you have the ability to pick a checklist type. So I think of this as almost like an interactive kind of engaging checklist where your market center is telling you, okay, if you're taking a listing, these are the documents that you're going to need to submit for compliance review. So it even tells you right here to start work with the opportunity, please select a checklist type first. So over here on the left, we're going to pick the checklist type. I'm in a different market center than probably a lot of you. So I'm just going to pick one of these checklists and then once we've done that, we wanna just move right into DocuSign. So we're ready to start this transaction. So at the top right of the page, you've got start a transaction. It's this gray little button right here. Now, some of you might have the option to start a transaction in both DotLoop and DocuSign. Some of you are just gonna have DocuSign just depending on when you joined your market center and what platform you were using. We are going to use DocuSign. So we're just gonna click on start a transaction and then we're gonna click directly on DocuSign. What that does is it's then going to open up the DocuSign login where we will log into your DocuSign Rooms account. So I kind of want you to think of it this way. Command is what we do to always start the opportunity and then command essentially opens up the door into DocuSign. DocuSign is the e-signature platform that we use to pull in documents, fill out documents, and then send them out to get initials and signatures from our buyer or seller. So we're going to log into our DocuSign Rooms account, which all of you would have one of these created either for you by your market center, or maybe you created it, and that is linked to your command account. All right, so once we've entered into our DocuSign Rooms account, and again, it's called a Rooms account, which is kind of specific for Keller Williams um, and our partnership with DocuSign, I encourage you to think of rooms as transactions. So you're essentially just opening up a new room, you're deciding who you're inviting to that room, and you're adding your documents to that room for the e-signature um, to be able to share documents. So we're using this room for that. So every transaction is going to have its own individual room where we keep everything for that transaction. So tip number one is to really start when we're in the DocuSign room, we're gonna start from the left-hand side of the page and we're just gonna work our way over really only between two or three of these tabs. So we're gonna start in the details section. So again, all I've done so far is I created that opportunity I went into the documents tab of the opportunity. I clicked start a transaction, and then that took me directly into this room. And you'll see I'm in this room because I have got one, two, three, four test Avenue. That's the name of the opportunity. This is just the room ID. Every single room in DocuSign will have a different ID. And then I even have the expected closing date based off of what I entered into the opportunity. So this is just confirming that I'm in the right one. We also always wanna make sure we've got this KW logo up here at the top right. That lets us know that we're in the KW DocuSign Rooms account, which is always the account we want to be in. 
Um, any questions from anyone just before I move on? I do have a question. Yeah. The screen just before you got to this one on mine said sync transaction or go to transaction. It And I think you had something. OK, yeah, that's what I had. And then I do. I am connected to DocuSign, but for some reason it didn't come up when I hit go to transaction. Um, so do you have any pop up blockers on or anything like that that it because it, it's going to open it in a new window. I'll check, but it went straight into DocuSign, which is what I always use. So I don't know, but I'll check. Yeah. Um, if not, we can definitely take a look at that. All right, so we're going to go into details first. So details is remember, like it's in the details. We're going to make sure that we're doing that because this is going to save you guys so much time. So when we go into details, you'll see that this is essentially all the room information, all the information that we can enter. So all I've done is I've clicked on details and then I want you to think anything that you can enter here, let's enter because it's really going to save you time. So we clicked on details and then in DocuSign, these are your like action buttons is what I call them. So over here on the top right, we've got an edit button with a little pencil next to it. If I click on that, you'll see that every field on the details page then becomes something that I can fill out. So here's the way that DocuSign works. Anything that I enter into the details section automatically flows into all of my documents. So if I have 10 documents, I don't wanna have to write the address 10 different times. So by me just entering the address here in the details section, it's automatically gonna flow into all my documents. Same thing with the price, closing date, anything I can enter here is automatically gonna pull over into all of the documents. So I really just wanna go through and make sure that I'm entering as much information as I possibly can. Something else we really wanna pay attention to is we wanna make sure over on the right-hand side of the page that we've entered any of the information for the sellers or the buyers um, that we know. So for this one, I'm saying that I'm taking a listing, so I'm representing the seller. So remember, I entered the seller, they were already in as a contact. So you'll see that their name has already come up here, as well as their phone number and their email address, because I have all of that information under their contact card in my command account. So we're just going to scroll through this and we'll put an address in, we'll put some details in here. So we're just going to do this as one, two, three, four, test um, room is what we'll call the address here. And we'll say that the city is Charlotte. We'll say that the state is North Carolina. And I, for the sake of time, you guys will not fill out every single thing. Let's do one, two, three, four, five as the zip. So we could enter the property type, um, anything that you need to fill out here. We get into the next section and we'll have the listing date. So we'll say it's today. We have the listing expiration date. It's a very quick listing. Um, we'll say that it is the 500,000. And then current listing amount is the same. Now in this section, I have offer details. I'm taking the listing. So I don't know the offer details yet. So remember that we're looking this for either the buyer side as well as the seller side. So let's kind of flip it and think that we were representing a buyer. We would fill in all of these details. Right. So we would put in when is the offer date. So again, the details are always going to be the same. We're just going to fill out as much as we possibly know about the transaction that we're doing right now. Now, I did not in enter a seller number two, just for the sake of time, I'm going to keep it with one seller. But if we had two sellers, we would be able to enter their information right here. Um, so again, we're just going to keep going down. We would enter as much information as we know about this transaction. I'm already in there as the listing agent because it's pulling from my command account. Now down here at the bottom, I've got all the buyer's information. So if you were representing the buyer, we were doing the same thing on the buyer side, you would just scroll down. We'd make sure buyer one and buyer two were entered. Um, if we needed to enter that, we would do that here as well. So once we've entered all of the details that we know for this particular transaction, <clears throat> excuse me, we're just gonna hit save at the very bottom of the page. And then you'll see that you get this quick confirmation that tells you that this room has been updated. All of the details that you've entered in here have been saved. So I'm just gonna stop there for a moment. Do I have any questions from anyone on just filling out the details before we move into documents? We're good. Okay. 
So let's move into documents. We filled out all the details. Now it's time for us to pull the documents that we need to pull into this room. So we're just gonna do that by clicking on the documents tab at the very, very top of the page. And then you'll see over here on the right, again, we have those action buttons that we can use over here. And if I just think about it this way, I wanna add documents into this room to send them for initials or signatures. So to do that, all I'm gonna do is click on the blue add button and I've got uh, six different ways that I can add documents. So the first one would be to add them directly from your computer. So think of if you had them saved as a PDF or anything like that, this is how we would pull those documents in. The second one is DocuSign forms, which is what we'll go through together today. We also have zip forms that you can use there. <clears throat> and then the final three are document cloud-based sharing platforms. So Box, Dropbox, or Google Drive. So if you use any of those and you share your documents there, you can very easily pull those in here as well. We are gonna go through DocuSign forms first. So we'll say that I'm gonna add maybe a document or two using the DocuSign forms. Now I am a member of about 10 different market centers. <laughs> so when you see my long list of, um, of different documents that I have, don't let that throw you if yours isn't looking like mine. Um, so we're going to pick our DocuSign documents. I have mine in a group. You might have them in forms or groups. That's kind of different for Market Center. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to choose my DocuSign forms. We're going to say we want some seller forms. And so I'm just going to pick this one document right here. And then we will also do a just one additional like addendum. So you'll see that you'll have a list of the documents here. Every market center might have set these up a little bit different for you. So that's where if this screen looks a little bit different as you're following along, that's completely fine. We do have the ability to come up here and search for any forms in this. So if you're looking for a really specific form, you have the ability to do that. So we're gonna just choose whatever documents we wanna add. We're just gonna click the blue add button, gives you just a moment, says successfully added all selected forms. That page will just kind of resync and then we'll see both of those documents listed right there. Now we're not going to fill out these forms quite yet because I want to add an additional form. I'm going to say that I want to add a PDF form maybe or something like that. So again, if I have a PDF, maybe it's a um, attachment that I downloaded from the MLS. Maybe you have your own sort of seller sheet that you like for them to sign off on that is a PDF that we want to drop initials into. That's very, very simple. All we're going to do is click on add and then this time we're going to choose from our computer. So as long as you have them saved somewhere on your computer, you'll get that box that will pop up. We'll have the ability to then come in here. Let me just move some things around and choose the PDF we want. And then we've got that document dropped right in there. So now that we have added the documents that we need for this particular transaction, we want to go in at this point, and this is where we're going to fill them out. So this is where we're going to fill out the documents. So to fill them out, I'm just going to click directly on the document, give that just a moment, and then you'll see that document will load up. Anything I entered in details will already be on the page. Um, so we'll see that right there. Perfect. So we'll see I've got the seller's information right here. I've got my information right here. Down here, I entered the dates here. I've got the price. I've got the address. So I've got everything here. Now, this is important that we want to just take time. We're really filling out the documents here. So we want to take time and make sure that everything is correct. Um, I can come in here and I can put any additional dates here or anything that I need to. So this is where we're taking the time and we're going through and we're really filling out the documents. So we're just going page by page, making sure anything that we need to type down here that we're doing that. So this is where you're actually filling out the documents for signatures before you send them. So we're gonna come through, make sure everything's good. Just continue to go page by page, fill everything out. So I can't stress that enough. This is where we're filling out the documents before we're sending them. And then once we are good, everything is filled out, everything is checked that we need to, we're just gonna hit that save and close right up here. And then I would just move on to the next document and do the same thing. So I've done it already with the exclusive right to sell listing agreement. 
Then I would go into, if I had an additional addendum or disclosure that I wanted to send for signatures, I would do the same thing by just clicking on the document right here. So again, documents is where we not only add the documents into the room, but it's where we completely fill them out. Um, I'm just gonna stop there for a moment and just see, do we have any questions so far on just adding documents or filling any documents out? We're good, okay, fantastic. So now we're gonna move on to how we actually send the documents. We send the documents through what we call envelopes. You can do this, um, let me see, Kate, what about documents that don't have a fillable field? I found in DocuSign that some don't have fields available to fill. Um, so Kate, if you have like a specific form where you're experiencing that, I'd love to know more about that. Any DocuSign document, every field should be able to be filled out. Um, in PDFs, they're not going to be, we would drop any text fields in there that we needed for that. So um, if you have like a particular document, we can absolutely look at that. But um, from what I've seen, everything should be fillable by you as the agent for that. So if you have anything specific, just drop that in chat for me so we can take a look at that. All right, so we are ready to send these using envelopes. We can come up here to the envelopes tab and we can go through that way. Um, what I just think is a little bit easier is if these are the three documents that I know I want to send, um, you'll see that once I hover over a document, I get this little circle at the top left of the document. So let's say that these are the three documents. I'm sending these to my seller. We had a fantastic listing appointment. They wanted to electronically sign everything. We're sending it to them right now. All I'm gonna do is click on that circle, click on this circle, and click on this circle. So I'm choosing the documents that I want to send. And you'll see that once you've clicked on those circles, we get this really nice little toolbar at the top of the page right here with a bunch of different options. What you want to look at is let's think of them, they're electronically signing them. So that's the pen. If I hover over everything, you'll see I get names of what those are. If I hover over the pen, I see that it says create envelope. So these three, I want to create an envelope that I'm sending for signatures. So all I'm going to do is click on the pen. And then you'll see that it kind of bounces me right over to envelopes where I can create this new envelope. So I encourage you to think of envelopes as emails. So let's think of them as an email that I'm sending maybe to my buyer or my seller. Um, so a couple important tips on this. Under envelope details, we want to give the envelope name. And this is where I encourage you to just think of the envelope as an email. So think of this almost as like the subject line of this. What I mean by that is if we never change this, then there's a chance that you're going to have 11 different envelopes under this room and they're all going to be called please DocuSign. And that's going to get a little bit confusing if we need to go back into envelopes to see what did I send there, who signed it, when did they sign it. So let's think of naming the envelope what is really in the envelope. So I might say that this is the um, original listing paperwork. So this is when we were first taking the listing. So let's say later I need to send them something else. I need um, a listing extension and that's the only document that I'm sending to them. I might name that envelope, whatever that is. So we just, we really have a clear understanding of what's in each envelope. Down here is where we see the documents that we have in this envelope before we send them. Now we might realize, oh gosh, I have that other document that's in the room and I didn't add it. We can add it at any time. We can just click on room docs and then any additional documents that are in that room, we can pull in. Underneath here is the most important part of all of DocuSign. So if you listen to anything that I cover, <laughs> please make it just be like the next 30 seconds because this is the most important thing. We always want to make sure that when we are adding recipients to this envelope in this drop down menu, we always want to pick pre tagged roles. I cannot stress this enough. So, DocuSign is a really smart system. And DocuSign understands that if I say I am adding the seller to these documents as a pre tagged role of seller, then DocuSign knows in every single form that you are sending where that seller needs to initial and where they need to sign. So by you picking and saying pre-tagged roles, and this is the seller, you never have to drop initials, you never have to drop signatures. The system does all of it for you, 
on any DocuSign forms because it knows exactly where the person who's playing that role needs to initial and needs to sign. So it's very important. I'm just gonna show you one more time. When we are adding recipients to the envelope, we always wanna make sure that we're choosing that pre-tagged role. If for some reason you don't have a pre-tagged role, that means that in the details tab, you did not enter them as a buyer or a seller. So that's why we always wanna start with the details and make sure that they're listed as a buyer or a seller in there. If you don't see pre-tagged roles, it means that you just didn't do that. We can go back and do it and then come back here. So we are going to send this to one seller. So we're gonna say this is seller number one. And then over here, I'm gonna decide who that seller is. You will not have this long list of recipients. You will have <clears throat> your clients there. So I'm gonna say that the person that we're sending it to is who we call test client. Now, if I had seller number two, I would do that here and drop them. If I had buyers, I would come in and I would add all of those different things. We're just gonna send it to one seller for now. So we're gonna choose add selected. And then you'll see that it says, this is seller one, this is their name, this is their email address, they need to sign, we can see all of that. Now, if I was sending it to two people, two different sellers, I could come right back, choose add recipient and add them there as well. Underneath here, we've got a message to everyone. So this is how it will come across. So we're gonna say, here is the listing paperwork. And we're gonna say, let's get your home sold and move you to whatever you want to say there, but the subject and then the email message that's going to be sent with the documents. So once we've added the documents to the envelope, we've added the recipients, we're going to move on to the next step. But I just want to pause there for a moment. Do I have any questions from anyone or any clarity needed on anything regarding envelopes? Remember, pre-tag roles is going to be your best friend. So we always want to make sure that we're doing that. Now, let's say that we created this envelope and maybe we want to have this documents because we're ready. We're preparing ourselves for the listing presentation, but maybe we don't want to send these documents yet. Maybe we're just preparing it. We want to do all of that. We've got the option right up here to save and close. That will then save this envelope as a draft. So you're not move, or you're not sending it rather, which is the next step that we'll go through. You're just saving this as a draft that you can come back to at any time, make any changes, add any documents, and then send it off for signatures. We're gonna say that we are ready to send this for signatures. So we're gonna choose the next button, which is that yellow button. And I think of this, the next section, it's kind of your final little glance at all of the documents before we are sending them to the buyers, the sellers, whoever might be signing this. So we're just gonna give that a moment to load because this is a lengthy list of documents that I picked. So you'll see in this section, I can't fill anything out. I can't change anything. We do all of that in the documents tab. This is just where we're giving a, a one glance over before we send it. Now you'll see that as I scroll through, I've already got this box right here that says seller initials. So remember, that's the most important thing that we just mentioned, the pre-tagged roles. So because I picked pre-tagged roles, it knows, okay, you have one seller and they need to initial on this page. So if you ever have the issue where you're not seeing these or you're like, why am I having to drag and drop all these initials and signatures? We always need to make sure that we've added the buyer or the seller using those pre-tagged roles. So we're gonna go through, I've got a, a one page that's a 12 page document. So again, this is just when we would be going through, taking a look, making sure everything's good, um, making sure everything's filled out, making sure all of the initials and everything are there. I'm just gonna go a little bit quicker just to get down to the PDF. Because remember, if you remember back to when I added documents, I added two e-signature documents and then I added one PDF document. Um, which is, let's see, this is, I think it's right here. Yeah, perfect. So this is my PDF. So let's say that I uploaded a PDF and I also want a signature in here, but because it's a PDF, it didn't do that. I have the ability to come over here and to decide what I want to drop in and where I want it. So if I want a signature right here, I just drag it and drop it, pull it in. If I need initials down here, I do the same thing initial. Maybe I also want a date next to the signature. I do that right there. 
So I can essentially mock up any PDF the same way, same as I'm doing this. And so then down here, again, we're saying this is a PDF. So maybe I need a signature, we'll do it right there. And then I need a date signed right over there. Maybe I wanted to add a text box right down here. I can do that. I can make it read only over here. I can add the test text there and I've got all of that. So again, you're mocking up or, or marking up a PDF right before we're sending this through the envelope. So we've got the documents tab where we fill out the e-signature documents then the PDF right here if and when we have that. Um, let's see, when putting text in message and sending to another agent to submit an offer after signed by buyers, does the message also show to the view only recipient? So you can actually, if you um, remind me, Kate, and I'll kind of go back, because you can actually, if we're sending it to three people, I can actually do a private message just to one of those people if I wanted to do it that way. So I'll, I'll kind of show you that right there. Um, so now that we've filled out the documents, we've got the PDF, we are ready to send this. So I am gonna send this, I'll send it to myself, um, just so you guys can see how it actually comes across, <coughs> excuse me, to the consumer. Um, so we're just gonna hit send, and then it takes just a moment, you'll get a really quick confirmation that that has been sent. And then it'll actually take you right back into your envelopes and you'll see on that envelope, we now have waiting for others. So we'll have that right there. So I'm just gonna um, take one moment just to log into my Gmail account. While I'm doing that, if anybody has any questions on anything that we've covered so far, please feel free to drop it in the chat or to unmute yourself and ask any questions. Again, oh, sorry, did have someone have anything? Good thing. Um, are you going to go over, and I, I didn't see anybody ask this. Maybe they did in the chat. When you have uh, two people and there's an order where you can do one, two, or one, you know, when they sign it, it goes in a certain order. Yeah, I can definitely show that to you guys. Yep, absolutely. Um, so let me just pull this up. We'll show you the DocuSign, how it comes across. Perfect. So it comes across directly from you. So it looks like it's coming from you as the agent, just via DocuSign. Um, my email subject was here is the listing paperwork. So that's written right there nicely for that. And then it'll have your name. It'll say you as the agent sent you a document to review and sign. And then I've got review documents right underneath here is the message that I put in the email message. So I've got all of that. So really all that they can do as the consumer is just click right here where it says review documents. It's really the only option that they have. So we'll let that load for just a moment and you'll see it'll take you actually directly into the document. So super easy for anybody that's using it. So the first thing that they have to do is just agree to use electronic records and signatures. And then we're gonna choose continue. And so you'll see they can't make any changes. So they can't come in here and type, they can't do anything like that. They have the ability to just click on start. It drops it right down to where they can initial or they need to initial. Um, I'm gonna skip this one and then just kind of show you what that looks like. So we will go through and I will initial the rest. So when they do the first initial or the first signature, it's going to pop up and ask them to just adopt their initials. So you might just want to tell them to make sure that everything is spelled correctly, legal name is here, initials are correct, because this is their opportunity to change that if that is incorrect. Um, they can select a different style. So they'll have just kind of a very generic writing of that. If they don't like it, they can click on change style over here and they've got a lot of different options of what they can do. They also have the ability to draw their signature. So if they prefer to do that, or sometimes we see some people that have their um, signature saved as a JPEG that they prefer to use, they can upload that here as well. But we're gonna say that that one's fine. And so then it'll just, ideally they would be reading the contract they're signing, <laughs> but it'll just keep moving them through um, into the next thing that is required, these initials by them. So I'm just gonna keep, move in. I missed another one too. So we'll keep going. Then we're going to sign. We see this um, date. Now this is 
the last little page here. So you'll see I hit sign and I don't know if you saw that, but it pushed me all the way back up to the top because I skipped that first initial. So if they come over here and they say we're finished, it's actually going to just keep taking them back to that initial. So this is something that's really nice because we know, especially in the market we're in today, we need fully executed signatures and initials on every page. And this basically requires that they're doing all of that. Then we can hit finish. They get a nice quick confirmation to save a copy of your document. They can create a DocuSign account at this time, or they can say no thanks. It's completely up to them. So we'll say no thanks. And then that is it from the consumer side. So let me now go in to our DocuSign room. So let's just do a little quick refresh right here. So we're back into the DocuSign room as the agent. And now you'll see that when we're in the envelope section, that envelope, one second, cancel. One second, there we go. Perfect. Um, that it now says completed. So we know that the documents have all been completed. Now let's talk about when we go into the documents tab, because this is where I see sometimes that we just have just a tiny bit of confusion. So remember that we initially only had three documents. So we added three documents to this room. Now they've multiplied. <laughs> so now we have seven documents. So the way that DocuSign works is it always holds on to the original document and that's the working document that you always work off of. What I mean by that is let's say that they signed this listing agreement, then you went to the listing appointment and they decided that they wanted to change some of the terms or the price or something like that and we needed to re-sign the listing agreement. We would then be able to come back into this DocuSign document make whatever changes that we needed to, and then just resend that one document and it would change with all of those signatures. So essentially the document that you're filling out with DocuSign is never the same document that is signed. And you'll see, I, it's probably very small on your screen, but you'll see that I have the exclusive right to sale listing agreement. This is a form. So that's your DocuSign document. That's that working document. And then right next to it, I have the exclusive right to sale listing agreement and it says signed. So if I click directly on that, I can't make any changes to this. It essentially saves it as a PDF. But if I wanted to just take a look and make sure the signatures are all really there, you'll see this is where it has all of the signatures and the documents for you there. So what I like to do, because I understand that sometimes it just gets a little bit confusing as we start to have all of these documents in the room. So if we come in here to the documents tab and at the top right, we've got an action button. And I like to add a folder and I'm going to call this folder my signed documents because I want to know when I'm submitting them for compliance or when I'm looking at documents, I want to know that I'm looking at the right documents. So the first thing that I need to do is create that folder. And then if I want to add documents to that folder, I can just choose what documents I want to add. So I want to add all the signed documents. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hover over this document, over this document, and I've got one more right down here, this document. And then I get that nice little toolbar right up here again. And you'll see one of the options is move. I want to move those documents. So I'm going to click on move and then it asks me, where do I want to move these documents? So I want to move them to a folder in my current room, which is always going to be that first option. And then it even has my folder listed right there, sign documents. I'm gonna move all of my documents into that folder. So then I have those documents just nicely in that folder. If I don't even wanna see these documents, I wanna collapse them. I can just click directly on that arrow and it kind of pushes that folder down. So when I look at the room, I'm really just looking at my executed documents right there. Um, okay, so I know we had two questions, one about the order when we're doing envelopes and then one about sending maybe a message just to one person. So we're just going to walk through that. We'll do a new envelope for that, but I just want to pause a second there and just see um, as far as the consumer receiving it, signing it and you guys receiving it back. Do I have any questions on that just before we go into some other questions? We're good. Okay. So we're gonna create a new envelope. I'm just gonna use the same documents just to make it really easy. And we'll just actually pull in one document. 
And let me do a small little document, just this one pager. So we'll do that. We'll create an envelope. We'll name this one addendum. And then I'm down here, I'm gonna add, we'll say I'm gonna add two people now, right? Or let's say that maybe you're representing both the buyers and the sellers. So we'll say that I've got this person here. Let me make sure I have different people here. One second. So we'll, we'll just pick three people for this. See if it lets me do it that way. Okay. So here's what we're looking at right here. And this was a great question that was brought up. So I've got person one, person one, person two. So essentially what this means, because both of these people are entered as sellers, that means that the second that I hit send, it's going to go to person one and person one at the same time. So it's going to go to both of them. They're both going to be able to initial and sign the documents. And then it basically creates like one final kind of merge document with all of those signatures together. Now what's going to happen is as soon as it's executed by both of those people, it's going to automatically go to this person, number two. So let's imagine that you had, um, you were representing both the buyers and the sellers and you needed to send it to the buyers. And then the second that they were done, you needed it to go to the sellers. You'd be able to say, okay, once it, one and one have signed it, then I want it to immediately go to two and you'd be able, the system would do that automatically for you. So you wouldn't have to come in, take that signed document, then send it to the other person. The system would do that automatically for you. And you can change these at any time. So if you actually want it to go to this person second, and then we'll say this person third, you could do it and then that would happen. So a lot of times we might see that there's like a trust and you're sending it to multiple people and there's kind of one person that's mainly overseeing everything, but we really truly need signatures from everyone. So we, we might not want it to go to everybody at the same time. We might want it to go to the primary person that's signing. And then once they've agreed to the terms, then we're comfortable moving it on to two and three. So you can use this at any time for that, which is a really nice little feature. Um, the other question that we had was about private messages. So maybe with this person, that's the first person of the trust. I have something that I want to send them that I don't want anybody else to see. I can come right over here to the more section and I can choose add private message. Um, and then this message right here, only that person would see. So if I was sending it to the other agent or, and I wanted them to see something, if I was sending it to whoever it might be, this is only going to go to them, um, not to all three of the people that will go right down here to all recipients. And then you'll see, we'll have this nice little bubble right here that'll tell you that private message was added just for that person. And I can click on that at any time and see that. Um, questions uh, and from anybody on any of that? We're good, okay. So the final thing that I just wanted to show you today is now that we have an executed document, how we then get that into command for compliance. So remember opportunities, compliance, all of that is done through command. DocuSign is the vehicle for adding documents, filling out documents, getting them for signatures. So I would need to get back into that original opportunity that we created, but notice that if you're doing this at the same time, I basically have those two tabs open right here. So I've got that at any time, but if we had logged out, if it was a different day, we needed to come back in, we would do the exact same thing. We would just go in through the same opportunity. We would click on the documents tab. And then this time we'd be able to add the documents here. So they have added a button that if you have ever used this before, this button is gonna save you so much time. <laughs> So if you've used compliance before, you maybe know that we had to come over here and we had to individually add a file, add a file, add a file. So they've heard your feedback. And so we now have this beautiful little button up here at the top of the page that says attach multiple files. And this is gonna save you so much time. So we're gonna click on attach multiple files. So again, we're saying that we've executed the documents. We're ready for these to be submitted to our broker in charge or whoever manages your compliance for that. So again, we're in, I'm just gonna go back one step to show you again. We are in the opportunity. 
we're going to choose attach multiple files if we're adding multiple documents at once. And then again, every market center is different where you're going to have this really nice checklist of what they need for you um, from you rather for compliance. So it's going to take you to attach manual files first, but if we've used DocuSign, we just want to click on that little DocuSign bubble. And then this syncs directly with that DocuSign room and also the DocuSign folders. So that's why I really like to add that new folder in your DocuSign room that is signed documents or whatever it might be, because then you'll see, let's say I'm adding the listing agreement. I'm going to click on this and I can scroll down to my signed documents. So I make sure I'm always pulling in the right document and I say, yep, this is the exclusive right to sell listing agreement. And then maybe I have uh, this doc down here. I'm going to do the same thing scroll down to my sign documents, and I'm going to pick whatever I need there. And then I'm going to just choose attach right down here. It pulls those documents in, and then I'm able to hit that green button that has turned. It was gray prior because I had no documents to add. Now I'm able to just click directly on that and choose submit to market center. And then that lets your compliance coordinator that there are new documents for them to view. All right, so I'm going to um, just stop there. If anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself to ask them or drop in chat. I'm just checking that out as well. Sydney, hi. Hi. Could you explain these? Because uh, these are new. I, I started before these uh, buttons came up. Could you explain exactly what they mean? I mean, I see required there. I know what that is. So these, I'm in a market, this is like a market center that's a test market center. So you're oh. never going to have it like this. Yeah. So oh. your market center will have a checklist for you that wow. you're picking and it, it will have basically when you're taking a listing, like we require these documents, we don't need these documents. So this is where every market center is going to be really different for that. Um, so your BIC or your MCA would be the one that would have set those up. So if you have okay. any questions about that, they can definitely right. answer those. Thank you. Yeah, I know my screen is always a little bit confusing, Cynthia, because it's <laughs> it's all fake, right? <laughs> um, anybody else, you guys, any questions? All right, I'm going to stop. Oh, um, sync transactions. So Kate, you'll really never use sync transactions. Sync transaction is there because when we first rolled out command, a lot of market centers were using dot loop. And so if you had loops that you were still using that you wanted to sync those loops over into your command platform, that would bring those over. So you never have to sync it. It automatically does it all on its own. That's just kind of an older button that's there that we don't use for anything. All right, anybody else, any questions? We're good, okay. So just a couple of reminders, you guys, really important things. You always wanna make sure we're filling out details as much as we can. That's gonna save you so much time by you entering everything in details. It's just gonna flow automatically into the documents. And then the other really big tip is to make sure we're always choosing pre-tagged roles. So if at any time you're looking at documents and you think to yourself, well, why is the initial not there? Why is the signature not there for them automatically? We probably didn't pick pre-tagged roles. So we always, always, always wanna make sure that we're picking that. And then just remember that envelopes, think of those as emails. So when we're renaming them before we're sending them, just make sure that we're doing everything we need um, to help best with that. All right. So um, just as a reminder, you guys, yeah, how do we get the recording? So uh, Carolinas has a YouTube channel. So if you guys just go to YouTube and search for KW Carolinas region, it'll be the first one that'll pop up. And after we kind of go through and download all of these, we upload them. I try to usually do it the same day. So hopefully today we'll have this uploaded. So you'll have this entire session there for you. So if you weren't um, have friends that weren't able to attend or you wanted to go back and rewatch it, you guys will have it there. All right. Okay, well, that's it. If no more questions, thank you guys for your time. Thank you for being here. Um, and we are here to help with anything that you need. All right. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you. Bye, everyone.